North Carolina head coach Hubert Davis is the NBA's second all-time leading three-point shooter in terms of percentage, behind only Steve Kerr. The question is, does his expertise translate to his team? It's time to find out. You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Tuesday, July 19th, 2022. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I'd like to thank you for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or your first watch every single day. Please don't forget the show is free and available anywhere you get podcasts. So you can go ahead and subscribe right now. Why wait? For those of you watching, go ahead, smash the like button and leave some great comments as you are listening or watching today. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. I'd like to thank LinkedIn Jobs for being the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster and for free. So post your job right now for that low, low price of free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions apply. All right, so here's what we're doing today. It is Tuesday, and what we're going to be doing on Tuesdays throughout the rest of the summer is one of my favorite things. Uh, I love stats and the stories they ha help tell with sports. And so what we're going to be doing every Tuesday is looking back at a statistical category from last year's Carolina basketball team and seeing how that translates what, what they did last year as individuals and as a team and then what that means for the upcoming season. Because Hubert Davis is now the man at the, at the helm of the Tar Heels, it only makes sense to start with three-point shooting percentage. Because once again, second, currently the second all-time leading three-point shooter in NBA history. 44.1% uh, behind only Steve Kerr, head coach of the Warriors, at 45.4%. It's translated pretty well for Coach Kerr and the Warriors. Hopefully the same is going to continue to be true for Coach Davis and his squad. So every Tuesday, we will be doing stat category review, and then every Wednesday is our summer preview roster series for the Carolina basketball team. Now, the big reason I'm doing this on Tuesdays is because Tuesday is Tuesday trivia here on Locked on Tar Heels. We haven't been doing it most of the summer, but want to get back into it now that we are doing our stat reviews. So we're going to do a trivia question that revolves around whatever that statistical category is for the day. So here is today's Trivia Tuesday question. What is the lowest and highest year for team three-point shooting percentage for Carolina ever? For those who are, are not sure of how far back that goes, the three-point shot was first introduced to the NCAA in the 1986-87 season. So you've got to figure out what is the light, lowest team three-point shooting percentage and the highest team three-point shooting percentage. I don't expect you to figure out the number, but you need to figure out what the year is. I'm going to be answering it as the show goes, just based on what we're talking about. So go ahead, stop right now, drop the answer in the comments of what you think are the lowest and the highest. <laughs> okay, so again, it makes sense for us to start with threes, and here's how we're going to break it down. We're going to start by looking at last season, the 2021-22 season, and how the Tar Heels shot as individuals from the three-point line. <clears throat> Interestingly, for a good portion of last season, at the, the Tar Heels had multiple players who were shooting over 40% from three-point range. Um, that is phenomenal, super phenomenal, especially given uh, how Carolina had been shooting in recent history as a team and given um, the volume of three-point shooting that the Tar Heels had going on last year. And so, um, pretty crazy. Now even though for a while they had a whole bunch of people shooting over 40%, 
by the end of the year, Brady Manick was the only one who achieved that, at least in terms of those um, who shot a qualifying number of three-point percentage. The reason I say that is because Anthony Harris also shot over 40%, but he only attempted five threes. So um, we're only looking at people who had uh, 10 or more made threes in this metric. And so Brady Manick finished with that number 40.3%, making 98 threes. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And so what's interesting about that is not only did Manick have the highest percentage on the team, but also the most made threes on the team. And that is a, a combination that you absolutely want and need from your best three-point shooter. That means... <laughs> Brady Manick, if you haven't figured it out already, was insanely valuable to last year's team. Um, eventually, in, in our last segment of the day, we're going to talk about what this upcoming season's team uh, has to look forward to. And one of the things you're going to hear is they got to find a way to replicate that or replace it, I guess, as well. Now, outside of Manick, of the six players who attempt the most threes on the team, that would be Brady Manick. Dawson Garcia, R.J. Davis, Caleb Love, Kerwin Walton, and Leaky Black, five of those six players made 35% or better of their threes. That's great. That's what you need from the guys who are taking the most threes, and also the fact that you have that many doing so. There's been some years where Carolina only has four shooters um, taking a, a majority of the shots. And so as um, Hubert Davis recruits and brings in more shooters, that, that's obviously going to be more true that they have more volume shooters. And so um, five of those six shot 35% or better with Leaky Black being the lone one who didn't. He shot 33.3%. Unfortunately though, of those uh, five who shot 35% or better, only two of them are back. Brady Manick shot 40.3%. He's gone. Dawson Garcia shot 37.5%. He's gone. Transferred out. Kerwin Walton shot 35.4%. He's gone. Transferred to Texas Tech, leaving RJ Davis and Caleb Love as the only players who shot 35% or better. So that is something that was true of last year. When we continue to look at what individuals brought in terms of three-point shooting, here is something that is alarming to me. I'm going to give you four names. Puff Johnson, Dontrez Styles, DeMarco Dunn, and Justin McCoy. Any guesses as to what those four young men have in common? I'll tell you. They all shot 25% or lower from three-point percentage. So while you had several guys who were 35 and above, these four guys were 25% or lower. That is a glaring issue from last year's team that obviously as we look ahead is going to have to be fixed. Um, continuing, so a, a couple other points looking back at last year's shooting as individuals. Armando Baycott, we had heard a lot of noise about all the three-point shooting he had done over the summer to prepare to shoot more. In the end, he only took eight attempts last year, made one of them. And so that's going to be a similar question, again, as we look ahead, is, is what will he do? Um, but Baycott lives at home, traditional center, doing that. Now, that is the look at what individual Tar Heels did. One person who I also want to look back at that wasn't a Tar Heel, but was an individual playing college basketball that is now a Tar Heel, is obviously Pete Nance. And this is where there is a little bit of hope. Pete Nance didn't take a ton of threes. He attempted fewer than Brady Manick made. Took 93. Brady Manick made 98. But the encouraging note is that Pete Nance made 42 of those 93, which translates to 45.2%. And so that is really encouraging as you look back to what individual Tar Heels did last year. <clears throat> For Pete Nance, he had made under 30% his freshman and sophomore years, and then 36% his junior year. And so you love to see that progression, and hopefully he will continue to do that coming into North Carolina. And so that, that is our glimpse back at what the Tar Heels individually did last year in terms of three-point shooters in the main rotation. 
I want to then next move to looking at, okay, so put that all together and let's look at what Carolina did as a team last year and compare that to what they have done throughout history. We'll do that in just a second after I tell you about LinkedIn. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in action, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. So create a job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile so that people uh, know you are looking to hire and your network can help you with that. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skill set and experience so that you can quickly prioritize who you want to interview and ultimately hire. And this is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find these candidates you want to talk to and faster. In fact, did you know that every week near, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? So post your job for free right now at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Again, linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Out now, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Again, this is available now at Locked On NFL wherever you get your podcasts. <clears throat> okay, so we've looked at what the Tar Heels did as individual three point shooters last year. What I want to do now is look at, okay, so what does that mean as a team? Because that's ultimately the thing is. Um, what is the sum of, of the parts? What, what does that whole turn into and, and how does that compare to how the Tar Heels have done historically? Well, I'm about to now give you the answer to one of the parts of the Tuesday trivia question, the lowest shooting three point shooting percentage in team history. Why? Because just a couple seasons ago, the 2019, 20 season, this is the Cole Anthony year. This is the year that was ended abruptly by COVID. This is also the year when NCAA Division I moved back the three-point line to the FIBA depth. Consequently, Division I wide, like across the NCAA, was the lowest combined three-point shooting percentage in NCAA history. In fact, if you're interested in learning more about that, I've actually written a couple of articles about it because that was the lowest. And then the next year, the 2020-21 season was the second lowest in NCAA history. It's a combination ultimately of moving the line back and teams taking more and more attempts every year. Well, Carolina was part of that as well. And so the 2019-20 season was, in fact, the lowest team three-point shooting percentage in Carolina history. They had 595 attempts and made 30.4% of them. That is the lowest a Tar Heel team has ever had. Now, again, to be fair, that's the line the, th the year the three-point line moved back. A lot of their best shooters missed a lot of games. Cole Anthony missed quite a few. Brandon Robinson missed quite a few, etc. And so, just to put it in a little bit of context. However, then the, the very next year, the year that was a little bit shortened on the front end because of COVID, the 2020-21 season was the second lowest three-point shooting percentage in Carolina history at 31.8%. Yikes. And so when I, I give you that context, because last year, 2021-22, the third year of this new distance, we, we've not seen great results for Carolina or nationwide from this distance, but you have hope because Coach Hubert Davis comes in. Well, how do the Tar Heels respond? They make 35.8% of their threes last year. They made 328 out of their 916 attempts. Now, <clears throat> If you look across Carolina history, that's kind of an average percentage. Um, and it's just right smack dab in the middle. I'll, I'll give you more specifics on that in just a minute. But it's also the most attempts in Carolina history. Never before had a Tar Heel team attempted 900 or more three-pointers. In fact, only three times in Carolina history had the Tar Heels attempted 800 or more prior to last season. And so that's really interesting. So not only 
did Carolina last year jump five percentage points from the two years prior to that, but they did so in 321 more attempts. That's great news to see the percentage and the attempts go up, just like we talked about with Brady Manick just a minute ago. And so when we look at, at totals in terms of those 916 attempts, that was 54 more attempts than the, the second most ever attempted by a Tar Heel team in history. What a swing this is in two years from the two lowest percentages in Carolina history back up to 35.8% and the most attempts. So that is encouraging. Now, when we look at team percentages annually, I'm not gonna go all the way through it because there's 36 seasons worth of data going back to 1986-87, the first ever season with the three-point shot attempted. But here's a couple things you notice. A lot of, a lot of the highest percentages Carolina ever shot we're in really successful seasons. 0405, that first Roy Williams National Championship, 40.3%. That is the only time um, in in the Roy Williams era the Tar Heels shot 40% or higher. That 0809 season, Carolina was really close to that 40% threshold, 38.7%. And so um, you really uh, it's interesting to look historically and see those higher numbers coincided with some of Carolina's best teams. Now, I mentioned that um, there were three other times Carolina had shot 800 three-pointers or more. That was 1819 season, just before that jump, um, that jump before the three-point line scooting back, and the season right before that, 1718. And then kind of an outlier, an anomaly, they also attempted 822 three-pointers in the 2002-2003 season, Matt Doherty's last year right before Roy Williams came back. Now, this is also the moment to tell you the other part, the other answer of the Tuesday trivia question, the highest three-point shooting percentage in Carolina history. Interestingly enough, that was the very first year the three-pointer was introduced to NCAA 1986-1987, Carolina shot 43.6% as a team from the three-point line in only 488 attempts. Um, those numbers were a lot higher. It's kind of skewed. Um, Carolina made 37% or better from three-point range in each of the first five years of the three-point's existence. A lot of that is because the line was a lot closer in and it's expanded back through the years. So the lowest was in the 2019-20 season. The highest was the 1986-87 season. Who got it right? Let me know in the comments. Would love to hear who did well. So um, <clears throat> my takeaway from all of this, Carolina, what they did last year, and then compared historically to what the Tar Heels have done in these 36 seasons. Last year's total of 35.8% was 20th on that list of 36 seasons. Again, that's right about average, just south of, of being average. 18th would be smack dab in the middle of 36 seasons. However, um, even though that is an wholly average number, I'm encouraged by it. Why is that, Isaac? That seems weird to be encouraged by only shooting an average percentage. Well, Keep in mind the context of all this. Just three seasons ago, the NCAA once again moved the line back. The first two years of that move back were the two lowest shooting three-point shooting percentages in Carolina history. And then they jump up to this pretty average number, which is good. That's a huge leap, five percentage points from 2019-20 to 2021-22. And so... Um, that, that is great, especially considering some of the personnel are the same from those teams. You obviously bring in Brady Manick, but you've got a lot of, of the same personnel moving from one to the next. Now, that's one part of the context. The other part of the context is Carolina achieved that 35.8% while taking the most three-point attempts in team history. And so you, you've got to imagine that, to me, this is great news. You, you had an average number and you had the highest number of attempts ever. Now, when we get in just a second to talking about what all of this is going to mean for the 2022-23 Tar Heels, you can imagine what I am expecting and wanting to see. And we're gonna talk about that, given all of these numbers, 
all of this, what do I expect for Carolina to do from the three-point line in the upcoming season? I'll tell you in just a moment after we talk about Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. Find all the latest developments, league reviews, and news, including Major League Baseball, which is at the All-Star break. In fact, today is the All-Star game. Make sure you tune in. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sports wagering info, including live betting, esports, and scores. And it's the best spot for all your podcasts and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about all the trends in action. Bet online, where the game starts. Okay, so given all this data, all this information about what Carolina individually did last year, what they did as a team, and how that compared to history, what does that mean for this upcoming season? Because that's ultimately what we want to look at and what we want to know. <clears throat> First off, let's ask the question, what does Carolina lose off of that team last year? Well, the biggest and obvious and most disappointing thing is Brady Manick. Uh, that's a huge loss. We've already talked about it. That's 98 threes, the, the best uh, percentage shooting three-pointer on the team. Got to find a way to replace that. You also lose Kerwin Walton. While he didn't last year have the year as a sophomore that he did as a freshman, remember as a freshman, he was the best percentage three-point shooter as a freshman in Carolina history. And even though he didn't replicate that or match it last year, he still shot over 35% from three. That is uh, something you've got to overcome that loss. Same thing with Dawson Garcia. While he only had 32 attempts in his shortened season, he made 37.5% of them. So you've lost three, We remember we talked about, important players. Um, same with Anthony Harris. He never took that many attempts, but in his couple years at Carolina had a high percentage from the three-point line. So you've lost some, some strong three-point shooters. But on the flip side, what do you bring back and who do you bring in? Well, Caleb Love and RJ Davis return again, both of whom shot 36% and higher um, last year. And so what do I expect and want to see from them this year? Why not make the jump to 40% or higher? Um, I, I know that that's a, a big jump when you're already at 36% and you're already taking a high volume number of three-pointers. But Brady Manick did it last year. Why can't we expect that out of a junior R.J. Davis and a junior Caleb Love from L Davis Love the Third? Remember, we're talking. That's our little nickname for them next year. I think the biggest thing is that neither of these guys can dip below 35%. Uh, you really want to see them at that 36, 37 percent or higher. You know, would again love to get over 40 percent, um, but I think you just have to stay above 35 percent. That's um, that that's the floor, but man, let's get up 38, 39, 40% for both of them. I think the addition of Seth Trimble is going to help them a lot, not necessarily because of his production, but because of the rest, um, the legitimate rest that he can give them, which is going to increase their efficiency. Hopefully their minutes played comes down, but their efficiency comes up. More rest means more efficiency. So Caleb Love and RJ Davis need to keep doing what they're doing, but my next point is this. There are some other players that have to step up and bring more than they previously have. Leaky Black is an example of that. He is never going to be known as a knockdown shooter. I mean, that's just not who he has been. Maybe, maybe he brings more of that this year. As I said last year, he made 33.3% of his 51 three-point attempts. And so, you know, could Leakey get up to 35%, just a couple percentage points higher? His shot, look, he's, when he's confident and it's going in, that's a huge win for Carolina. It's just bonus that he brings, but that could be huge. You might recall I mentioned there was those four young men who all made 25% or fewer of their threes. Again, that's DeMarco Dunn. Dontrez Styles, Puff Johnson, and Justin McCoy. In an ideal world, all of them, all four of them, get up to 30% or above. Or maybe if even one of them stays down low at that 25% or lower. Let's say Dontrez Styles is probably a prime candidate for that. Maybe Puff Johnson and DeMarco Dunn take 
huge leaps and get up to, you know, above 35%, kind of that threshold where Caleb Love and R.J. Davis are at. That can help mitigate Dontre Styles hypothetically not climbing much higher than he was. But just from those four guys, you want to see continued growth. Could all four of them get above 25%? That would be huge. Um, and I think, um, again, I think Puff Johnson and I think DeMarco Dunn are the two that really need to take that leap. Puff shot 23.1% last year. DeMarco Dunn shot 20% last year. Man, do it, do it, do it. Now, another thing I really want to see is what can Pete Nance do coming in? Again, he shot 45.2% from three last year. And while he didn't have Brady Manick's volume, remember I said he attempted fewer than Brady Manick made last year, and that's crazy. you got to think he comes to Carolina and uh, has more of a green light, shoots a higher volume of threes, and so I think that means his um, percentage will come down from that 45%. But... Could, could Nance get up to 150, 200 three-point attempts and maintain that 40% threshold? That would be huge of him to do. So I don't expect Pete Nance to replace Brady Manick's volume, but could he replace and maybe add on Brady Manick's 40% shooting from last year? That would be a huge, huge thing for Carolina as a team. Now, a, a glaring thing is that Dontre Styles only hit 16.7% of his threes last year. Even if he could get up into the 20s, mid-20s maybe, that, that would be big. I, I don't know what he will do. That's just not necessarily his game. But 20%, that, that's not <laughs> too terribly much to ask. What is Armando Baycott going to do? Remember I said he only had eight attempts last year, made one of them. Is he continuing to shoot this summer at that level he did last summer in terms of number of attempts in practices? And is that going to be more of his game next year, or will he continue to float more um, as a true center? I'm really, really curious to see what happens there. Very interesting. But for me, the the probably two biggest question marks of does this team continue to grow past that 35% are Puff Johnson and DeMarco Dunn. Hmm, really curious to see what happens there. Another thing, obviously you add in this four-person freshman class. Um, as I said, UNC freshmen typically haven't fared very well. I've, I've written extensively about the UNC freshman three-point curse and what the Tar Heels do there. Kerwin Walton bucked that trend. Can some of these freshmen do it? I don't expect Seth Trimble to contribute much in terms of three-point shooting, but hopefully he can give some here and there. I think the guy I'm looking to most is Tyler Nickel, who's probably not going to get a ton of playing time, but when he's in, um, can he be that, that four-level four scorer that he himself has talked about? What can Jalen Washington bring as a skilled shooting big man? And is, is Will Shaver able to contribute anything there? Uh, those are several question marks that we're going to have to see answered this season. All of this, here's the bottom line for me. Again, as a reminder, last season, Carolina shot 35.8% on the most three-point attempts in Carolina history. That is an average, average percentage, um, but again, very high in, uh, in, in terms of attempts. For me, I, I know we've talked a lot about with Hubert Davis' small sample size, just one year under his belt. We don't really know what to expect, but we can say this about three-point shooting. That number of attempts is not going to be an anomaly. That's not going away. Hubert Davis Carolina teams are going to continue to shoot a high, high volume of three-pointers. It's just going to continue to happen. Expect that number to be in the eight or nine hundreds again this year. Now, ideally, you would like those number of attempts to keep growing, but also the percentage to keep growing up above that average number. Could the Tar Heels as a team, I don't think they're going to get to 40% just based on the number of attempts they're taking, but can they just make that little jump up over to into 36%? 
in a in a great world, the Tar Heels could get to 37 or 38. Would love to see that. I, I think that is a dream. It's kind of ceiling is 38% for the Tar Heels. But I just want to see them make some incremental strides this year. Get up above 36%. And I think you'll be doing what you need to do. Why? Because with those number of attempts at that percentage, it's going to continue to draw a lot of focus out to the three-point line. What does that achieve? That leaves Mr. Armando Baycott and Pete Nance, who can operate probably a little, he's going to operate more around the rim than Brady Manick did last year. That's gonna open up a lot of space for them to operate inside while um, being able to kick out when they need to to open three-point shooters. So you mix that sheer number of attempts with Baycott and Nance and what they can do inside, particularly with so much attention drawn away from them. And I think we got a great opportunity for Carolina this year to continue to shoot a lot of threes, make a higher percentage of them, and let the big dudes operate inside. Yes. All right, so that's it. That is our uh, first stat summer Tuesday, looking at three-point shooting percentage from last year and then the, what we expect for the upcoming season. Can't wait to continue this next Tuesday. I hope you'll be looking forward to it as well. And that is it for the end of today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Coming up tomorrow, we continue our summer roster preview series. Pat Kilby and I will be unpacking Mr. Puff Johnson and what he brings in his junior year. Thanks so much again for making Locked on Tar Heels your first listen or watch today. Remember, you can subscribe right now if you haven't already smashed the like button so easy and leave some comments on your thoughts on this three-point shooting. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on Heels. You can follow me on Twitter at Isaac Shade, right stinking there, I-S-A-A-C-S-C-H-A-D-E. Get more on the ACC by making Locked on ACC your second listen today. Host Candace Cooper and the local experts of Locked On take you across the ACC in 30 minutes, five days a week. Really appreciate you spending part of your Tuesday with me talking Carolina athletics on the only daily Tar Heel podcast out there. And remember, it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Until tomorrow, peace! <laughs>